All right, so I'm just adding a general box around. And you don't need to do this. I just find that it works for me. It helps to kind of frame the whole image. And I'm going to just start getting the horizon line in about here. So just a really simple scene of a tree and some shrubs and things in the foreground, maybe some trees in the background as well. And it really takes this long to draw it in, You're not spending all day kind of fiddling around and trying to get everything correct. Now this is a 0 0.5. I sort of swap between a 0 0.5 and a 0 0.3, 0 0.2, just to get in more detail. So just adding in a few branches for this tree here. And, you know, I've done trees a lot. And once you've, once you've had a bit of practice, it's easy to kind of improvise the limbs and things like that. But, uh, you know, I'm just being quite casual here with the actual leaves of the tree. Okay, and I'm going to just hatch in the bottom of it there. Okay, and in the background, I think what I'll do is add in some sort of shrubs and other trees just in the distance. So yeah, just putting in a few shrubs and things in the background. A um, little bit more here. You know, maybe another one there thinking also maybe I will add in just a hill or a mountain or something just running across the distance in the back and there just going up to the corner like that okay and then you've just got some trees little shrubs and things through the front there so about where this tree trunk ends, there's actually a, I don't know, it looks like an undulation or something just behind the trees. So I know you can't see the, the actual reference picture, but it is darker a little bit around there. So I'm just going to indicate it like that. And with the tree as well, one thing to always pick with, you know, any kind of landscape is the, a light source. So I'm just going to imagine uh, the light source coming in from so from the left hand side we'll go from the left hand side because I think thinking to make it the the shadow go to the left hand side to begin with but it's gonna kind of go out of the, the the picture and I think it will look nicer if it kind of crosses over a little bit to this side or just balance out some more so just going to indicate shadow like that so Nothing too, it's nothing too fancy because a lot of this you can get in later with the watercolors and some little shrubs and things in the ground, maybe some up the front here. You know, the good thing about these pigment liners and you know, I've got these in a, in a pack, basically they come in all different sizes and you know, just allow you to get in a little bit more detail and as you go further in the distance, what you want to do is make sure that the details just get smaller. So these little strands of grass or whatever you're putting in. And as you go down to the foreground, just make them bigger. Okay. Looking what else to put in there. It's a pretty simple sketch for the time being. Do feel that it needs something over on this side as well. Often you look at a reference picture and they can make really good photographs when you look at it, but when you when you actually do it as a painting, just feel that there's something missing from there or it doesn't just it doesn't work in, in a painting. So always need to look at the reference picture and think to yourself, hey, you know, maybe I can change something up, maybe I can, you know, make it look a bit more interesting or add something. To make it my my own basically so i always like to encourage people to do that rather than just copy from the reference picture itself and if you do that it's completely fine but i think as you start to experiment a bit more it's always good to try to just add in your own flavor to it so 
I'm gonna try to add in another tree to the right hand side and maybe a smaller shrub as well. So picking up my 0.5 and let's just try to add in a bit of just a tree coming up here. Pretty rough. And if you notice, you know, the trunk isn't looking so great or it needs to be thicker, just go in and correct it like that. Just restate it. Okay, so let's get in some of the leaves. And for that, you can swap to a smaller pigment liner. If you're using the same pen, it's also no no big deal as well. Okay, I'll just put in a bit of a shadow coming across like that. Okay, so pretty, pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to start getting in to doing the painting for this here. So as you see, this this probably only took me about five minutes to sketch the thing in. Okay, um, picking up a larger brush, and when I say larger, it's sort of in comparison to the paper, the size of the paper I'm using. And this is a three quarter inch brush. The bit of paper is almost, uh, I'm not sure what it is, it's A5. It's a pretty small um, bit of paper. What is it? It's uh, yeah, A5 sized. So, you want to pick a brush that's going to be able to cover through, you know, pretty much this entire sky area. And you're not going to have to go back and keep picking up paint all the time. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to pre-wet this whole area of the sky. So very quickly cutting around the tree as well. And pretty basic like that. And look at the paper from an angle and you'll be able to tell the areas that you've pre-wet will just be a little bit shiny in those areas. So once you've done that, what you want to do is just pick up some darker pigment. And I'm going to try to get in a blue sky here. So, just picking up a sort of darker mix of cobalt blue. And I'm just going to drop in a little bit like that. I'm just trying to get some cerulean, cerulean in there as well. Okay, there we go. So, just dropping them in, painting like that, and leaving some areas of white on the page. As you move down as well, just make those clouds a little bit smaller. Okay, back to the blue. But you see some of the paper has already started to dry in the corners and things like that. But you can see the effect I was trying to get with this kind of wet on wet clouds here in the corner. Okay, so that pretty much covers it. Another thing I like to do is, you know, just emphasize the bottom of these clouds. Often they're a bit darker at the bottom. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this gray paint that I've got in the palette and just add in a little bit at the bottom of some of these clouds like that. And while the paper is still wet, it melts in quite nicely. So it's just another technique you can try. You, know, you can even just pick up a darker shade of blue that works as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go straight to the trees. I'm going to pick up a sap green 
very bright colored green and I'm just going to get that in quickly like that. Okay, and same for this other tree. And it does look a bit bright at the moment, but later I'll go in and just dull it down the second wash. That's just this just gives it a kind of background wash color. Okay. Alright. And what I'll do now is I'm just gonna try to soften little bits of these clouds, these areas at the bottom here. Like that. And I'm going to go into the mountains. Normally at this stage as well, what you can do is just dry it off so that when you go into the distant mountains and things like that, it doesn't bleed into the sky area. Okay. So. Number 12, flat brush. And what I'll do, I'm just going to pick up a ultramarine blue. I think I should have refilled these little pans before I started. I've only got a little bit of these blues left, but it should be enough. Okay. So you want to make sure that the mountains that you're doing are just a little bit darker than the sky. So that's just going to make them come forward a bit. Really important. But you don't want to make them too dark as well. So just something like that, covering that area quite quickly. Like that. Just darken the base a little as well. And now what I'm going to do is, picking up a larger brush, just go through and just add in some more green in the foreground. So really using that sap green that I had before Sap green is just basically a very bright green. You can use, you can mix up your own light green by just adding some yellow into um, you know, a darker green that you might have. But I find this is just uh, a lot easier. And I had a tube of this from a long time ago. So we'll just go in like that. You know, some of the mountain area is actually blending in as well. No big deal. Carry that all the way down to the front. This is just going to act as, again, a bit of a background color for when you go in and add in some of the darker shrubs and things you need to have a good variation of different values it's just going to make the painting look a lot more interesting okay let's try to add in some blue near the front it's just going to darken it a little Indicate some shrubs. You now, one of the things, brushes I like to use as well is my fan brush. Looks, you know, you get pretty much similar effects so if you had just a little brush and you're doing it adding little details and I'm just going to add the blue directly onto this area here 
indicate some shrubs in the foreground, with grass, like that. Okay, and also just want to darken just behind there as well. Right, and what we can do is also just indicate some of the shadow too. So just mixing up a bit of blue and blending it in with some grey on the paper. Like that. Okay. Pretty basic. Just going to add in some details with the trunk. Here. This is a bit of sepia. I need to make the trunk darker than the shadows, just by a bit. Go in and add a little bit of detail for the leaves. Leaving the left hand side a little bit lighter. Okay. Pretty basic sort of sketch. some birds okay it's a very sort of simple sketch that you can start out with but you know with a lot of these uh, you know when you practicing using trees and a general, you know, general sky wash and you've got mountains and things like that. A lot of landscapes involve these components and especially the techniques that you're using can apply for most um, paintings. Okay, so we're gonna be working off this reference photo today. And I've actually got this one from Pexel. It's a really good site to just get a lot of free royalty, free pictures that I use. And this one is from Austria place called Vilek. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. But the reason why I chose this photograph was there's some interesting shadows just being cast to the left. There's some buildings in the background. We've got mountains, we've got trees, a little path leading in. I think this is a pretty, pretty good place to start off for a beginner. It's not too simple, but it's not too difficult as well. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the pigment liners today. I've got five of these, uh, six of these actually, they've come in a pack that I bought when I was in Nuremberg last year, but you can get them pretty much anywhere. Uh, they come in all different sort of brands, but I'm gonna start with the 0.3 to begin with. And I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to mark out some basic points first. And before I do that, let's just get a general border and notice I am you know not trying to draw the line all at once I sort of just do it in bits and continue on so it's kind of a bit of a, a rough rough uh, border okay so what I'm gonna need to do first and probably the easiest thing to do is just mark the horizon line it's really important to make those basic markers because that's where you're gonna be able to gauge where everything else is in the reference photo when you're drawing. So 
always mark out those obvious lines and paths of this path going in as well. So if we look at the photograph, the trees in the far distance and just below the midpoint of the paper around here. So I'm just going to mark it in like that and just go over pretty quickly like that. And um, we've got a bit of a path that comes in from this side of the paper up there. And then you've got a bit that comes in from here goes further in and tapers tapers in like that goes to the back okay just pretty pretty rough sort of sketch there's some trees running here as well there's one up here in the corner that you can just get in and I'm gonna just get in some of these leaves indications of leaves and things like that but also hopefully you can just get in some branches as well like that okay, okay. that trunk in a little bit darker and I'm not going to really worry about any of the shadows, to be honest, because with all the shadows, we can get them in later with the pen. But uh, just some little bits and pieces on the ground here. And remember, it's just a reference photo, so you're not trying to replicate it exactly. Just use it as a guide. So the trees, if you notice, they get smaller into the distance. So just want to mark out a few, maybe another one here, another one there. You know, there's actually a lot of little details and stuff in the background, like little houses and stuff. It's hard to see really what's there. And just because it's there doesn't mean you have to, you know, put it in as well. So this is your chance to decide, I guess, as an artist, which bits you want to include and which bits you don't want to include. So just going to make this tree a little bit bigger, go up like that, there, join it onto this one. Yeah. I'll just get a bit more of that branch, like that, a bit more darkness near the trunks of these trees, and another one there perhaps. Okay, and we've got a, let's try to get in some of these little buildings here first and you know, really I'm going to just indicate like that, swap to a smaller pigment liner as well. Uh, Just something simple like that. There's another little one here as well. Just wanted to indicate, I guess, the house in the background, but you don't want it to overwhelm everything else. Let's put in a tree here that sort of goes in front of the house. Yeah. That should be a shadow that goes over to the side and there might be another tree here as well and we've got the mountain that comes in approximately here and let's just get it in like that some shrubs, smaller trees as well here. 
Okay. Let's get these in. Good. Okay. And maybe some taller ones like this as well. Let's make them little irregular shaped. Don't want them all to look the same. Okay. And a little bit of hatching as well to the left of the trees, just to imply a bit of shade with shadows just being cast to the left hand side. Okay, this path actually goes all the way in here and well, it actually comes out here goes almost towards this house and in the background of course we've got some mountains and I'm going to swap to even a smaller nib 0 0.1 it's a little trick that I learned that you can do when you're doing things drawing objects that are further in the distance just switch the nib so that you're in a you're using a smaller nib and it works almost to just push it back even further so you're not emphasizing those particular areas too much okay just you know just getting in some of these mountain shapes there in the background like that you can try to do a bit of hatching as well and that just implies some shapes in there some darker rocks We'll get most of this in later on. And near the front as well, you know, just do this sort of thing. Just hatch the trees to the left hand side a bit. Again, just to help with that effect, uh, that uh, shade effect, that will just to make it look like the shadows cast on the left side of the tree some the light source coming from the right and you know let's maybe put in some little strands of grass and stuff coming out in the foreground like that but we can get some of this detail uh, in later as well Just gonna make this trunk a bit closer to the foreground. Like that. And I'll add another one here. There. I may actually add another one there as well. Just a bit closer because I'm feeling that a uh, it just needs to, this area just needs to be filled up a bit more. Okay. So that's almost done for a very quick drawing. You can get away with that. So, how long did that take? I don't think it took longer than five or 10 minutes, but we'll get started now on the painting. Okay, first we're going to start with the sky and get in some of these clouds. And I do use flat brushes now a lot more than round brushes because I find that it's so much easier to paint large areas and get that loose effect rather than fiddle around with a round brush, especially those smaller round brushes. If you're going to use one, use one that has a nice reservoir, that nice mop and uh, if you're going to use these smaller round brushes only use them for detailing otherwise you tend to fiddle too much in areas so let's wet this area of the sky first the paper i'm using it's not proper watercolor paper it's just sketch paper so sometimes when you use just simple materials it takes that pressure off as well 
I really don't have to worry too much on how it turns out. And time to get in some cerulean blue. I'm almost out of a lot of my blues. I need to get some extra pans. So let's drop a bit in here. There maybe, near the mountains. Just up here perhaps. The sky. A bit of this purple as well. It's left over from the palette. What I used last time anyway. And yeah, we'll let that do its thing. Just mix a little bit like that. I kind of bleed nicely. And just underneath some of these clouds, again, I'm just going to darken some areas slightly like that. And yeah, just be wet here just to make it blend better. Apart from that, I'm thinking I'm just going to leave that sky. You can change it up a bit later, but I don't want to fiddle too much. Um, now I'm going to move down into a foreground and. Actually, I might look at just starting on this mountain. So with the mountain, I'm going to be using a ultramarine blue. And the trick with this is that it needs to be darker than the sky. So make sure that whatever you've mixed up is just a little bit darker than what you've got there. Okay, I'm gonna swap to a smaller flat brush. This is just gonna give me a bit more accuracy. And just put in the shapes of these mountains. And you'll notice there's areas of the mountains which, which are lighter blue as well. And that's just basically the bits of um, snow and areas on the mountain so I'm just going to try and get a bit of that in first like this in some areas just indicating areas here and there like that then I'm going to go and just grab some of that darker blue we'll go in there again while it's all still wet Almost parts of it have already dried, and just getting the rest of them like this. Bit is kind of bled into the sky. Okay, now time to get in the trees. So I've got myself some sap green already mixed up here. And I've also got another kind of green. I'm not sure what it is. It's just really light green. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get in some of these basic colors on the trees. And I know it looks pretty bright right now, but I'm going to go in later with the darker green to even it out. This is just going to be the light, a bit of the light anyway. Okay, carry this green all the way down the page, like that. And almost around here, this turns into a grayish color. So I'm just picking up some grays off my palette letting it mix with the greens a bit. There. Maybe a bit, bit of a cooler tone as well. Like that. Okay. 
bit of cobalt blue and back to the sap green the larger brush as well and get this whole area in you can even add in some yellow to the background a bit more here mix that all around a little bit of yellow in there it's all going to turn out yellowish green anyway but just makes it look a bit more interesting this way okay Oops. Yeah, now we can also just indicate these trees here in the background, get them in too. That. Okay. Right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to dry a little bit before I get in some of these these shadows and variations and things like that. It's just not quite dried but I want it want to go in while it's still a little bit damp these trees here are a darker green so just pick up a slightly dulled down darker green and let's get that in cut around this other one in the front and the houses as well a little bit there leave that white on the houses there we go And probably while it's still wet, I want to drop in a bit of blue in there. A tiny bit of just an indication of some blue. Dry off the brush and do this kind of thing. Oops, hit that house a little bit, but no big deal. It's just going to make it look a bit more interesting when it dries. Okay. Still waiting for this area to dry. While well, that's doing its thing, I'll just see if I can darken these tree trunks a bit. A bit more blue in there, blue and sepia. I want it to be kind of a coolish color, but brown as well. using the edge of a flat brush, the little point there. Okay. Almost, almost game enough to go in here. Just give it a quick dry. Okay, so using that flat brush, what I'm gonna do is get in a shadow, pretty much the same as how the picture has it. And we'll need a cooler color for that. So I'm just gonna pick up some of this cobalt blue or Prussian blue. I'm not sure what kind of blue it is. But we wanna make it pretty dark. Almost as dark as these trunks, but not as dark. So get that blue, mix it in, dull it down with some of the gray that's left on your palette. And let's give it a try. So we've got a tree here, so we want to get that cast across like that. And remember to leave little bits of the previous wash 
on the page as well. Okay. Get this one all the way down to the end. Like that. I've gone on a bit more of an angle than the reference photo, which is fine. Just means you have to now make sure that all the other ones run on that same angle as well. Okay. And what you can do now is play around a little bit with this fan brush. Before I do that, let me just darken these trees down slightly because it needs to be, they just need to be darker than the actual shadows. Look at that. And make more sense. Okay. You want to let that line work show through too. Okay, so moving on now to this little fan brush I've got, picking up some lighter pigment and just adding that like this through the shadows to indicate just a bit of texture and uh, even in the foreground like that. It helps to join up the shadows in a funny kind of way too. So there's just some grass in the middle things on the path. So a lot you can do with these little fan brushes. They're, they're a uh, fantastic time saver. And, you know, even if you were to paint all these little blades of grass by yourself, um, a lot of the time it just looks artificial. So this way I can get in some textures and interest in the foreground. Like that. And the shadows look like they kind of blend in a bit more as well. So go ahead and keep doing, um, you know, add in bits of grass until you're satisfied with how it looks. And now the last step here is just adding in some shadows in the trees and maybe getting a bit of color on those houses too. So picking up some of this bluish green that's left on the palette and let's now add that into the trees on the left hand side. I'm really emphasizing more of that light that's, you know, if you look at the reference picture, it's quite dark the entire tree but I do want to leave some light just coming in from the left hand side a bit more okay so like that These trees here in the background as well. A bit of shadow to the left. There you go. Shadow cast to the left. And for the house going to pick up a bit of titanium white 
that. Maybe some Naples. Uh, some yellow ochre, actually. Just get in a little bit of colour in there. Look at that. Okay. Windows and maybe just add a bit of a shadow on the ground. Nothing too serious. Something like that. You can even just do this kind of thing. Almost, almost done, in my opinion. You can stop right now. You know, it's up to you what you want to do. You can add in a bit more detail into the mountains in the background. I do find though there is a cutoff point where you just you need to stop, otherwise it looks really overworked. Add in some birds. Hurt. Check out these line and wash tutorials here, that's going to help you get a bit more practice. Also got some pure watercolour demonstrations and tutorials that'll help you with your watercolour techniques.